Gospel of September 19, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, ought to hear, ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, after they hear, who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a, for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart, and they bear fruit, and they bear fruit through perseverance. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're just going to concentrate on this beautiful, beautiful gospel, the sower. The gospel of the good sower. It is interesting to imagine this scene. There are a large crowd gathered around the Lord, and more and more are adhering seemingly to the Lord. But the Lord does not believe in false intentions. He knows what is happening, and that is why he spoke a parable to them. A sower went out to sow his feet, his seed. Some seed fell on the path, was trampled, and the birds ate it up. Some on rocky ground, when its root withered for lack of moisture. Some among thorns, the thorns grew with it and choked it. And finally, some on good soil, when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. He makes an admonition whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Why is that? To fulfill what the prophet, what God had said through the prophet, they will see and see but will not be able to, to see. They will look and look but they will not be able to see. They will hear and hear but will not understand. Because these people have hardened their hearts. They do not want to be saved. In the first place, we, we should pray humbly to our Father that he might open our ears and our minds, that he might open our hearts to his words. The disciples know by this time that whenever the Lord speaks, there are like levels, that there is a deeper meaning, and that is why they ask him, what is the meaning? Again, he admonishes them, and you and me. Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom has been granted to you, but to the rest only through parables. Why has it been granted to you? Because you opened your heart in the first place, just as the followers, those twelve, had opened their hearts to the Lord. And he goes on to say, The seed is the word of God. The word of God. The Word of God, if we remember the beginning of the Gospel of John, if we remember it, well, I'm, I'm sure that most of us, most of you would not remember it in Latin. That's where we derive the word. 
Saint Jerome wrote, In Principium et ad Verbum. He translated the Greek. In Greek we can read Enarchegologos, which means in the beginning there was the word. Hologos, the word, is the eternal son of the Father who incarnated himself in the holy womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So the seed that the Lord is sowing is precisely himself, he as the word of God, that we should receive him in our conscience, that is the meaning of heart, our conscience. Now we can argue with this sower and ask him why is he so uncareful to throw away the seat in four different places knowing that in three of them it will not give fruit. But then we would have to remember that God is good to all of us, that he calls all his children to be with him. And on the other hand, it is not that we are the way we are and that's it. We are free to change ourselves. And that freedom is granted and guaranteed by God himself. So we are free. Now, let us read what not to be. The ones on the path have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. Those of us that do not believe, that do not dispose ourselves to believe, that would rather try to rationalize everything, are in dire trouble because the devil will always take away the words of the gospel from us. And that is very sad. For those of our brothers, we should pray. Then there are others, the rocky ones. They have no root. They hear the words, they're happy, eternal life, happiness, love. Hey, count me in. When, when there is a, pro, a time of temptation, when there is a tribulation, when it costs to reaffirm yourself as a Christian, they are fast to say, count me out, I don't want any of that. I'll take it if it's all for free, but if it costs me even the minimum, I don't want to pay for it. They are just like children playing games. And so they fall, they, they also fail. Finally, the ones who are among thorns, the anxieties of riches and pleasures of life. Yes, we are perhaps too much anxious to get rich, to pay for our bills, to have the pleasure that is due to us, or at least that we believe that is due or available to us. And of course it's hard to remain a Christian, a faithful one. If you are traveling abroad on a business trip, for, for instance, and then one of your co-workers or someone that you met in the bar wants to have sex, and you can say, hey, what the heck, I'm staying far away. My wife will not notice. My husband will not care. But then you have to, take, you have to run away from that pleasure if you find a wallet of money or a wallet full of cash it would be easier to just put it into your pocket and walk away but it would be great for you to ask for the one who's the, the legitimate owner, owner there are many instances when we are tempted but only those who remain faithful will be the ones who produce fruit. We have to have a generous and good heart and have perseverance. May our Father bless us all with his perseverance and his strength until we meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.